This article compares Unicode encodings. Two situations are considered, 8-bit clean environments, and environments that forbid use of byte values that have the high bit set. Originally such prohibitions were to allow for links that used only 7 data bits, but they remain in the standards and so software must generate messages that comply with the restrictions. Standard compression scheme for Unicode and binary ordered compression for Unicode are excluded from the comparison tables because it is difficult to simply quantify their size. Topic. Compatibility issues A UTF-8 file that contains only ASCII characters is identical to an ASCII file. Legacy programs can generally handle UTF-8 encoded files, even if they contain non-ASCII characters. For instance, the cprint function can print a UTF-8 string, as it only looks for the ASCII character to define a formatting string, and prints all other bytes unchanged, thus non-ASCII characters will be output unchanged. UTF-16 and UTF-32 are incompatible with ASCII files, and thus require Unicode-aware programs to display, print and manipulate them, even if the file is known to contain only characters in the ASCII subset. Because they contain many zero bytes, the strings cannot be manipulated by normal null terminated string handling for even simple operations such as copy. Therefore, even on most UTF-16 systems such as Windows and Java, UTF-16 text files are not common. Older 8-bit encodings such as ASCII or ISO 88591 are still used, foregoing Unicode support, or UTF-8 is used for Unicode. One rare counter example is the strings. File used by Mac OS by 10.3 and later applications for lookup of internationalized versions of messages which defaults to UTF-16, with files encoded using UTF-8 not guaranteed to work. XML is, by default, encoded as UTF-8, and all XML processors must at least support UTF-8 including US ASCII by definition and UTF-16. Topic. Efficiency UTF-8 requires 8, 16, 24 or 32 bits 1 to, 4 octets to encode a Unicode character, UTF-16 requires either 16 or 32 bits to encode a character, and UTF-32 always requires 32 bits to encode a character. The first 128 Unicode code points, U plus 0000 to U plus 007F, used for the CO controls and basic Latin characters and which correspond 1 to 1 to their ASCII code equivalents, are encoded using 8 bits in UTF-8, 16 bits in UTF-16, and 32 bits in UTF-32. The next 1920 characters, U plus 0080 to U plus 07 FF encompassing the remainder of almost all Latin script alphabets, and also Greek, Cyrillic, Coptic, Armenian, Hebrew, Arabic, Syriac, Tana and Inco, require 16 bits to encode in both UTF-8 and UTF-16, and 32 bits in UTF-32. For U plus 0800 to U plus FFFF, i.e. the remainder of the characters in the basic multilingual plane BMP, plane 0, U plus 0000 to U plus FFFF, which encompasses the rest of the characters of most of the world's living languages, UTF-8 needs 24 bits to encode a character, while UTF-16 needs 16 bits and UTF-32 needs 32. Code points U plus 010000 to U plus 10FFFF, which represent characters in the supplementary planes planes 1 to 16, require 32 bits in UTF-8, UTF-16 and UTF-32. All printable characters in utf ebsidic use at least as many bytes as in UTF-8, and most use more, due to a decision made to allow encoding the C1 control codes as single bytes. For 7-bit environments, UTF-7 is more space efficient than the combination of other Unicode encodings with quoted printable or base 64 for almost all types of text see 7-bit environments below. Each format has its own set of advantages and disadvantages with respect to storage efficiency and thus also of transmission time and processing efficiency. Storage efficiency is subject to the location within the Unicode code space in which any given text's characters are predominantly from. Since Unicode code space blocks are organized by character set i.e. alphabet, script, storage efficiency of any given text effectively depends on the alphabet, script used for that text. 
So, for example, UTF-8 needs one less byte per character 8 versus 16 bits than UTF-16 for the 128 code points between U plus 0000 and U plus 007F, but needs one more byte per character 24 versus 16 bits for the 63488 code points between U plus 0800 and U plus FFFF. Therefore, if there are more characters in the range U plus 0000 to U plus 007F than there are in the range U plus 0800 to U plus FFFF then UTF-8 is more efficient, while if there are fewer then UTF-16 is more efficient. If the counts are equal then they are exactly the same size. A surprising result is that real-world documents written in languages that use characters only in the high range are still often shorter in UTF-8, due to the extensive use of spaces, digits, punctuation, newlines, HTML markup, and embedded words and acronyms written with Latin letters. As far as processing time is concerned, text with variable length encoding such as UTF-8 or UTF-16 is harder to process if there is a need to find the individual code units, as opposed to working with sequences of code units. Searching is unaffected by whether the characters are variable sized, since a search for a sequence of code units does not care about the divisions it does require that the encoding be self-synchronizing, which both UTF-8 and UTF-16 are. A common misconception is that there is a need to find the nth character, and that this requires a fixed length encoding, however, in real use the number n is only derived from examining the n-1 characters, thus sequential access is needed anyway. UTF-16BE and UTF-32BE are Big Endian, UTF-16LE and UTF-32LE are Little Endian. When character sequences in one Endian order are loaded onto a machine with a different Endian order, the characters need to be converted before they can be processed efficiently, unless data is processed with a byte granularity as required for UTF-8. Accordingly, the issue at hand is more pertinent to the protocol and communication than to a computational difficulty. Topic. Processing issues For processing, a format should be easy to search, truncate, and generally process safely. All normal Unicode encodings use some form of fixed-size code unit. Depending on the format and the code point to be encoded, one or more of these code units will represent a Unicode code point. To allow easy searching and truncation, a sequence must not occur within a longer sequence or across the boundary of two other sequences. UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-32 and utf ebsidic have these important properties but UTF-7 and GB-18030 do not. Fixed size characters can be helpful, but even if there is a fixed byte count per code point as in UTF-32, there is not a fixed byte count per displayed character due to combining characters. Considering these incompatibilities and other quirks among different encoding schemes, handling Unicode data with the same or compatible protocol throughout and across the interfaces e.g. using an API, library, handling Unicode characters in client, server model, etc. can in general simplify the whole pipeline while eliminating a potential source of bugs at the same time. UTF-16 is popular because many APIs date to the time when Unicode was 16-bit fixed width. However, using UTF-16 makes characters outside the basic multilingual plane a special case which increases the risk of oversights related to their handling. That said, programs that mishandle surrogate pairs probably also have problems with combining sequences, so using UTF-32 is unlikely to solve the more general problem of poor handling of multi-code unit characters. If any stored data is in UTF-8 such as file contents or names, it is very difficult to write a system that uses UTF-16 or UTF-32 as an API. This is due to the oft-overlooked fact that the byte array used by UTF-8 can physically contain invalid sequences. For instance, it is impossible to fix an invalid UTF-8 filename using a UTF-16 API, as no possible UTF-16 string will translate to that invalid filename. The opposite is not true, it is trivial to translate invalid UTF-16 to a unique though technically invalid UTF-8 string, so a UTF-8 API can control both UTF-8 and UTF-16 files and names, making UTF-8 preferred in any such mixed environment. An unfortunate but far more common workaround used by UTF-16 systems is to interpret the UTF-8 as some other encoding such as CP1252 and ignore the mojibake for any non-ASCII data.
Topic. For communication and storage UTF-16 and UTF-32 do not have endianness defined, so a byte order must be selected when receiving them over a byte-oriented network or reading them from a byte-oriented storage. This may be achieved by using a byte order mark at the start of the text or assuming Big Endian RFC 2781. UTF-8, UTF-16BE, UTF-32BE, UTF-16LE and UTF-32LE are standardized on a single byte order and do not have this problem. If the byte stream is subject to corruption then some encodings recover better than others. UTF-8 and utf ebsidic are best in this regard as they can always resynchronize at the start of the next code point. GB18030 is unable to recover after a corrupt or missing byte until the next ASCII non-number. UTF-16 and UTF-32 will handle corrupt altered bytes by resynchronizing on the next good code point, but an odd number of lost or spurious byte octet s will garble all following text. Topic. In detail The tables below list the number of bytes per code point for different Unicode ranges. Any additional comments needed are included in the table. The figures assume that overheads at the start and end of the block of text are negligible. NB. The tables below list numbers of bytes per code point, not per user visible. Character. Or. Grapheme cluster. It can take multiple code points to describe a single grapheme cluster, so even in UTF-32, care must be taken when splitting or concatenating strings. 8-bit environments 7-bit environments This table may not cover every special case and so should be used for estimation and comparison only. To accurately determine the size of text in an encoding, see the actual specifications. Endianness does not affect sizes UTF-16BE and UTF-32BE have the same size as UTF-16LE and UTF-32LE, respectively. The use of UTF-32 under quoted printable is highly impractical, but if implemented, will result in 8 to 12 bytes per code point about 10 bytes in average, namely for BMP, each code point will occupy exactly 6 bytes more than the same code in quoted printable, UTF-16. Base 64, UTF-32 gets 5 and a third bytes for any code point. An ASCII control character under quoted printable or UTF-7 may be represented either directly or encoded escaped. The need to escape a given control character depends on many circumstances, but new lines in text data are usually coded directly. Topic. Compression schemes BOCU1 and SCSU are two ways to compress Unicode data. Their encoding relies on how frequently the text is used. Most runs of text use the same script, for example, Latin, Cyrillic, Greek and so on. This normal use allows many runs of text to compress down to about one byte per code point. These stateful encodings make it more difficult to randomly access text at any position of a string. These two compression schemes are not as efficient as other compression schemes, like ZIP or BZIP2. Those general-purpose compression schemes can compress longer runs of bytes to just a few bytes. The SCSU and BOCU1 compression schemes will not compress more than the theoretical 25% of text encoded as UTF-8, UTF-16 or UTF-32. Other general-purpose compression schemes can easily compress to 10% of original text size. The general-purpose schemes require more complicated algorithms and longer chunks of text for a good compression ratio. Unicode Technical Note No. 14 contains a more detailed comparison of compression schemes. Topic. Historical, UTF-5 and UTF-6 Proposals have been made for a UTF-5 and UTF-6 for the Internationalization of Domain Names IDN. The UTF-5 proposal used a base-32 encoding, where punicode is, among other things, and not exactly, a base-36 encoding. The name UTF-5 for a code unit of 5 bits is explained by the equation 25 equals 32. 
The UTF-6 proposal added a running length encoding to UTF-5, here 6 simply stands for UTF-5 plus 1. The IETF IDNWG later adopted the more efficient punycode for this purpose. Topic. Not being seriously pursued UTF-1 never gained serious acceptance. UTF-8 is much more frequently used. UTF-9 and UTF-18, despite being functional encodings, were April Fool's Day RFC joke specifications. References, <references>